and the last video for the end of the year, 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 is using chi-square tests wisely. Number one, what if, what if the expected counts aren't all five? Is there anything, anything you could do? Yes, there is something you could try to do, and I'm not saying this will always work, but it could be something to explore. So in this example, we have a uh, college age, 19, 20, 20, or 19, 20, 21, 22 year olds that are in college and they're undergrads and their living arrangements. Either they live at home, they live in someone else's home, they have their own place, or they basically live in dorms, or they have other, I don't know what other would really be classified as, they're homeless or live in their car, um, I don't really know here. But all of these are expected counts, okay? So if you look like, yeah, we definitely have over five, over five, over five, oh, we got a couple here that aren't over five. What could you do? Now, you could treat, this is a big if here, you could treat both of these ages as one age. You could say this is the 1920 year old group and you could add these two together. And then that would be over, let's see, that'd be what, 8.22, 8.22, which would be over five at that point. And then you haven't violated uh, the large sample size condition. So if you can do something like that, you can try to do that. How often are you really gonna run into that in this class? Not really often, but this would be more for practical application purposes. If you were really doing this, um, let's say in your semester portfolio project, and you get expected counts that aren't all five, this is one thing you might try to do. Now, the big thing this video is going to cover is, can you tell the difference between the three chi-square tests? So we have the goodness of fit test, we have the test of homogeneity, and we have the test for association or independence. So a quick rundown here. A chi-square goodness of test, a goodness of fit test, tests to see if an observed distribution is the same as an advertised or a claimed distribution. So think of the M&M example. You know, Mars, who makes M&M, says, this is the percentage of colors that you should expect to see in a bag of M&Ms. Okay, and they're not all the same. It doesn't have to be all the same. Uh, we could also talk about if a die is fair, if each side has the same probability. That would be a chi-square goodness of fit test. Uh, or you could see, you know, if things are uniformly distributed, that would be the dice example, for instance. Okay, so they have to give you some numbers. Okay, they have to give you some information to work with. Okay, some percentages about the, popula the population distribution. Uh, a chi-score test of homogeneity. There must be a sample from two or more different populations. Each individual is classified based on a single categorical variable. Another thing to add to this would be that each group is fixed, which means uh, in the cocaine example where we gave out the three treatments and we wanted to know if all the treatments were the same, we assigned 24 people to each group. We did that. Okay, we picked from two separate, or three separate populations, really, in that example. So we took all of our uh, cocaine addicts who wanted to try to quit that were on Desipramine, and we took 24 of them. And then we had all these cocaine addicts who were on lithium, and we took 24 of them. And then we had all these cocaine addicts who just wanted to quit, and we gave them placebos. We took 24 of them. So we fixed each group. Okay, we made that happen. Now, a chi-score test of association or independence, there is a single sample from a single population that then gets divided up into two categorical variables, okay? So each group, here's the kind of extra part we could add on here, each group is not fixed, okay? We're not saying that there must be a certain number of people in this group and in that group. We just let the people fall into whatever categories they fall into, okay? So those are the differences there. And it's really gonna be the test of homogeneity and the test of association independence that's gonna be the tougher one to distinguish between. The goodness of fit one's gonna be hopefully pretty obvious because they're gonna have to give you 
you know, percentages, kind of, most of the time, to work with. And you need to see if your observed values match up exactly with a proposed, a claimed uh, distribution. Um, now, again, the homogeneity and association independence, they start with, they both look exactly the same. If you looked at the calculate part, it looks exactly the same. You use, you calculate the same chi-square, use the same number of degrees of freedom, you calculate the p-value all in the same way. But again, the chi-square test of homogeneity, you're looking at several populations or several treatments. And a test of association independence, you're only looking at one population and you're splitting them up into two different categorical variables. Uh, for example, in the last video we did with uh, association independence, we looked at uh, socioeconomic status and smoking status. And we split people up into which category they fell into in terms of smoking status. And then we resplit them up into socioeconomic status, high, middle, or low. So instead of focusing on the question asked, it's much easier to look at how the data were produced. If the data come from two or more independent random samples or treatment groups in a randomized experiment, then it's going to be more of the homogeneity. If the data comes from a single random sample with the individuals classified according to two categorical variables, use the chi-square test of association independence. Now, here is an AP exam tip here, that if you have troubles distinguishing these two types of tests, you're better off just saying that it's a chi-square test than picking the wrong one. Okay. Are you going to get some points off because you didn't identify exactly what kind of chi-square test you're supposed to be doing? Probably, but at least you'll be getting most of the credit there. So it's better that you leave off information that's potentially wrong versus giving the wrong information altogether. So now let's look at five examples and let's see if you can figure out what type of the three tests you should use here. So this first one, are men and women equally likely to suffer lingering fear from watching scary movies as children? Researchers asked a sample of 117 college students to write narrative accounts of their exposure to scary movies before the age of 13. More than one-fourth of the students said that some of the fright symptoms are still present when they are awake. The following table breaks down these results by gender. So we have fright symptoms, yes, no, versus gender, male, female. Now, the thing to first look at is, how did they get these people? Are they just one sample, or did they split them up into two? Well, all it says is they have a sample of 117 college students. So they have one single population here. And then they split them up into gender and fright symptoms. So this is from a single, a single population here that then gets split up. Okay, they didn't fix how many males and how many females they were going to do. Okay, so this is a chi-square test of association or independence. Okay, we're wanting to see, is there an association between fright symptoms and gender? Number two. You read a newspaper article that describes a study of whether stress management can help reduce heart attacks. The 107 subjects all had reduced blood flow to the heart, and so were at risk of a heart attack. They were assigned at random to three groups. The article goes on to say one group took a four-month stress management program, another underwent a four-month exercise program, and the third received usual heart care from their personal physicians. In the next three years, only three of the 33 people in the stress management group suffered cardiac events, defined as a fatal or non-fatal heart attack or a surgical procedure such as a bypass or angioplasty. In the same period, seven of the 34 people in the exercise group and 12 out of the 40 patients in the usual care suffered such events. Is there a significant difference among the success rates for the three treatments? Now, a couple of things here. Number one, they're talking about treatments being the same or different. This leads me to believe that this is going to be a chi-square test of homogeneity. But one thing that catches my eye is, usually we would say that uh, there are, your data, your subjects, come from 
more than one population. So you might question yourself and say, well, we have 107 people that all had reduced blood flow to the heart. And this is all from one particular group of people. So is this more of a test of association independence? But then you need to go on and look at how or what they did with these 107 people. They started to assign them to three groups. Okay, so here's the fixed part that comes into play. They assigned a certain amount of people to each of these three treatments. So this is, in fact, a chi-square test of homogeneity. Okay, now technically all three groups are from the same population, people who have reduced blood flow to the heart, but they're treating each group of people as if they are from their own separate population. Okay, so this one's a little bit tricky, but in the end, there's more clues to decide that it's homogeneity than there is association independence. Number three, researchers looked at a random sample of 1,509 full-page ads that show a model in magazines aimed at young men. Um, what's my other word here? At young women or at young adults in general. They classified the ads as not sexual or sexual, depending on how the model was dressed or not dressed, oh, scantily, here are the data. Now, random sample of 1,509. So we have one sample here. Now, did we take our 1,509 and split them up accordingly? We did not. We did not say, we're going to take a certain number of this 1,509 and gear them towards men and, uh, you know, more, more towards women and the rest towards in general, you know, at young adults in general. They split up the 1509 full page ads just according to two categorical variables. You know, kind of gender, if you will, you know, men, women, both men and women, and in terms of sexual versus not sexual. So there really are no treatments here. We don't want to see that treatments are the same. We are looking more at a chi-square test of association or independence here. I know I made my chi-square a little crazy. We'll fix it. There, chi-square. So we just want to see, is there an association between the types of readers uh, that ads are geared towards versus how the models are dressed? So you can see here, you know, if we kind of look, can we kind of tell, is there any kind of association? We got about a one and one to five ratio, uh, what two to three type of ratio here, a little over, I don't know. I would say there's probably some sort of association. Number four, a study of identity theft looked at how well consumers protect themselves from this increasingly prevalent crime. The behaviors of 61 randomly selected college students were compared with the behaviors of 59 randomly selected non-students. One of the questions was, when asked to create a password, I have used either my mother's maiden name, or my pet's name, or my birth date, or the last four digits of my social security number, or a series of consecutive numbers. For the students, 22 agreed with this statement, while 30 of the non-students agreed. So what type of problem is this feeling like? Well, number one, we clearly have two samples. We have 61 randomly selected college students and 59 randomly selected non-college students. So we have two distinct groups of people here. So this is leading me more towards a chi-square test of homogeneity. Um, and they did kind of do this as kind of treatments. Uh, you know, the one treatment was, did you do this versus did you not do this with your password? So I would be inclined to say this is a test of homogeneity. And the last one, Acme Toy Company prints baseball cards. The company claims that 30% of the cards are rookies, 60% are veterans, and 10% are all-stars. The cards are sold in packages of 100. Suppose a randomly selected package of cards has 50 rookies, 45 veterans, and 5 all-stars. Is this consistent with ACME's claim? This should be the obvious one. 
Okay, the company is making a claim about the percentage of cards that are rookies and the percentage that are veterans and the percentage that are all-stars. So this is kind of like the M&M problem. But instead of looking at colors, we're looking at uh, experience, years of experience in baseball. So this one is a chi-squared goodness of fit test. And that is all. We are done with the book. We are done with the chapter. We are done, done, done. So I hope you enjoyed these videos immensely. I could go on for many more hours about how wonderful these videos are, um, but I will leave that up to you. I enjoy teaching you guys, and I'm going to shed a tear here. It's been fun. It's been real. I hope you guys learned something, and uh, I hope you, you know, at some point in your life, realize that this statistic stuff is useful.